Every sea otter that I've worked with has been a rescued and rehabilitated animal. Most of these otters, like Taslina and Joey, were rescued after sadly becoming separated from their mothers and needed to be hand raised. That's why I like to host charity events to support wildlife rescue centers. We're at $4,225. I've been streaming for 18 minutes. We're streaming for 24 hours today. So far, the Cape Passionate community has raised over $50,000 for organizations like Ocean Conservation Namibia, famous for rescuing entangled fur seals. Firstly, thank you so much for having us today. This is really, really cool. This is, we're just completely blown away. And the Alaka Alliance, a collaboration of tribal, nonprofit, and conservation leaders dedicated to restoring a healthy population of sea otters to the Oregon coast. And so, I'm here on the Oregon coast to announce an enormous charity live stream event happening over on my Twitch channel. On July 16th, we're going to help the Oregon Coast Aquarium build a new rescue and rehabilitation center that will provide critical care to injured, stranded, and endangered marine life. And there's something in it for you too. Anyone who donates is automatically entered in a raffle to win prizes charitably gifted by members of my community. The utter reversible plushies. All right, let's see who wins this one. Little Lily. Prizes like sea otter art, plushies, and more. Oregon Coast Aquarium has even donated swag bags to be raffled out, as well as a virtual adoption of their youngest sea otter, Earl. Oregon Coast Aquarium is one of just three marine wildlife rehabilitation facilities in the Pacific Northwest. Every year they rescue and rehabilitate about 300 animals, including seals, seabirds, and sea turtles. The aquarium currently utilizes aging warehouse facilities to diagnose and treat rescued marine wildlife. I spoke with Oregon Coast's curator of marine mammals, Brittany Blades, about the limitations of their current facility. Not exactly otter friendly. <laughs> right. When we had the sea otter that had stranded in December 2021, uh, we had them in a pool identical to this, but we had to make shift, you know, on the spot before we could let the otter into the space. I didn't even think about the tape on the side, so then we have that tape so that way typically they have sharks that go in there okay. and it's a way to deter the sharks from, they can see the sides, like they can see sure. that there's something wall, blocking yeah. of a wall. But the sea otter, he started, he started picking at him. It's definitely not ideal. We made it work. He probably would have had a better chance at surviving if we had a smaller space that was more well fit for a sea otter. Brittany then showed me plans for the new facility, including a sea otter ICU unit. So this is, the entire wow. treatment room. And then here's our ICU area where we mm. could have a sea otter go in there. It's a little bit smaller, so that would be a good one yeah. for a pup. The new facility will also have the capacity to potentially do sea otter surrogacy programs as part of their collaboration with the Alaka Alliance to reintroduce sea otters to their native range. If it's that we are going to be a holding facility for potential reintroductions, or if it's going to be a surrogacy program is needed on the Oregon coast, or whatever it is, we just are trying to keep it as uh, adaptable as possible. Just like Joey and Taslina, all three sea otters at the Oregon Coast Aquarium were rescued when they were very young after being separated from their mothers. Schuster, he was found stranded off the coast of California, just like Earl, and same story with Oswald too. All three of them were rescued by Monterey Bay Aquarium. And Schuster's story is that he was found stranded with a laceration on his side, we think may have been uh, from a shark. And so maybe that's what happened to his mom. And because of that laceration, he did have to have some hu more direct human attention to care for that injury. And so it's because of that that they weren't able to release him or completely have him go through that, for that full surrogacy program. Yep. Oops. 
And Oswald, Oswald, um, he, his story is pretty cool because he was actually helping train one of the sea otters at Monterey Bay Aquarium to be a surrogate mother. So they paired him up with one of their younger female sea otters to teach her how to be a surrogate mother. Right. And it's just really awesome that he was able to help yeah. the future really sea otter about, pups. I didn't really think about that aspect of it that like, they're, they're not just, they have to be taught how to. They have to be taught how to be moms. It's stories like these that highlight why marine wildlife rescue facilities are so important. They give these animals a second chance at life. Those are just a few reasons why I hope you'll join me on July 16th to help build the new Marine Wildlife Rescue Center. We're actually uh, hoping some of the fundraising money could also go towards building our sea otter ICU. It is pretty expensive and that's something that we could start having at least that one sea otter ICU tow up and going before we even have the full rehab center going. That would help both their rescued animals in the rehab program, as well as their resident animals. As always, head on down to the descriptions for more information and let me know what you think down in the comments. You can see more of my time behind the scenes with Oregon Coast's Marine Mammal Team in this video right up here. Yes. Do not kill the sea otters for their fur, yeah. Like Earl. Yeah, and this sea otter, that's Yaquina, the sea oh. otter that we had in rehab. Yes. That's angel wings. Yeah. Super cute.